Prince, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the President of the Republic of Suriname, His Excellency Deisley Delano Bautista, the government and the people of my country, I wish to congratulate you and the international community with the convening of this summit and the adoption by world leaders of its outcome document. Mr. President, we welcome the fact that the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development has made provisions to include unfinished matters of the, un of the MDGs. We also welcome the integration of the three dimensions of sustainable development and its focus for the next 15 years on people, planet, prosperity in this agenda. We endorse the targets and the goals as well as the integral role of peace and partnership in this regard. Mr. President, for the past five years, closing inequality gaps in my country have become a high priority in the social contract between my president and the people of Suriname. Suriname has therefore placed special emphasis on improving education, health, and its social conditions. In this regard, primary education is now free of charge for all children in Suriname. In addition, we are implementing a national after-school program with the aim to enhancing the conditions for better learning. We further established a universal medical insurance program, including the provision of health insurance to, citizens, to senior citizens and children below, below 16 years free of charge. Since non-communicable diseases are leading to decreased productivity and now have become the highest cause of that in Suriname and the Caribbean region, we are developing policies and programs to fight these diseases, including by promoting healthy lifestyles. In addition, legislation has been adopted establishing a national minimum wage and a national pension floor for all workers. Mr. President, despite all these efforts towards achieving sustainable development, we cannot ignore the challenge we face to realize these objectives, especially as a middle-income country. In this regard, we support the recognition of the special challenges of the middle-income countries in the Addis Ababa Action Agenda. Mr. President, climate change is a major threat for my country. We are particularly vulnerable to climate change because of our low-lying coast, where 80% of our population resides and major productive sectors operate. Suriname has set an example to the world that we can be carbon negative. My country has maintained a forest cover of well over 90% of its total land area and a deforestation rate of 0.20%. Suriname looks forward to a successful outcome of the 21st Conference of Parties of, climate change, of the Climate Change Convention to be held in Paris later this year. Our commitment an objective is to continue our tradition of protecting our environment. We are ready for partnerships, in particular related to cooperation within the context of adaptation and mitigation. Mr. President, a revitalized global partnership for development is of paramount importance for a successful implementation of this new agenda on the ground. Suriname reaffirms South-South cooperation as an important vehicle to advance sustainable development and to achieve greater unity and solidarity among developing countries. My government supports the people-centered approach in the sustainable development agenda with special emphasis to the most vulnerable in society, namely the elderly, persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, children, women, and youth. Hence, every effort possible possible needs to be undertaken to invest in increasing their active involvement and opportunities in society, including in productive sectors. In particular, gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls, as well as the elimination of all forms of violence, should be ensured. In conclusion, Mr. President, success and a better world will depend on all of us, individually and collectively. As Secretary General Ban Ki-moon recently stated, and I quote, we cannot have a plan B because we don't have a plan B, unquote. 
Therefore, we have to be bold and strong in our political and financial resolve since failure is not an option. I thank you. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Suriname for her statement. I now give the floor 